String gauges have got to be the most annoying thing in the modern guitar player community because it seems like no matter how many good quality videos there are of people literally giving you the gauges of what you would need for a certain tuning for a certain guitar, people still seem to want to know the answer to what string gauges should I use? I get this question all the time on comment sections, on YouTube videos, in Instagram DMs, which if you aren't following me on Instagram, I'll leave a link somewhere on the bottom of the screen. And I think most of it comes from people really not understanding why a certain string gauge is needed for a certain purpose. So with that in mind, I've kind of set out to make this the last string gauge video you ever need to watch in your life which is why I'm highly encouraging you guys to share this video around with friends and people that might not be as well informed as you. Even though you might know something about string gauges already, this is why I'm highly encouraging you guys to share this video around because I want this to be the one-stop shop for anything string gauge related, whether it's to new guitarists, whether it's to guitarists that are getting a little bit more picky with their string gauges. This isn't meant to be, oh, here's a tuning, here's a guitar, here's a string gauge. This is why you need that string gauge, just to get a little bit of a better understanding so you can make a more informed decision for yourself. And if you're watching this, you might be already thinking, well, who the hell is this guy? Who's he to tell me that this is the last string gauge video you ever need to watch? What does he know? Over the years, through YouTube, through Instagram, and most importantly, through my own research and other musical facets, I've been fortunate enough to make a lot of connections with other people that are really, really passionate about this stuff. Anyone from, say, Mick from Harrods Custom Guitars in Melbourne, who does the guitar work for bands like Thy Artist Murder, North Blank, guitarists like Arbor of the Sky, um, Sophie Giuliani, to companies like the string source that I'm endorsed by. And that relationship literally stemmed from both being very passionate about string gauges and having the perfect gauge of strings for certain tunings for certain guitars. Um, that company was literally founded off the owner being sick of not being able to get the perfect gauge strings. There's three major things that every single guitar player should take into consideration when they're picking the perfect string gauge for their guitar. The tuning that they plan to play in, the scale length of their guitar, and their playing style. Playing style is something that doesn't really get touched on and you might be asking, what do you mean by that? We'll get to that later. For now, let's just continue with tuning and scale length. This guitar is my Jackson Misha Mansour USA Signature. It's a six string and it's currently set up in drop C. If you're not familiar with drop C, drop C is standard E a whole step down and then you detune the top string another whole step down. And then finally, the scale length. So if you don't know what the scale length is of a guitar, when someone says, what's the scale length of this guitar? Basically, the scale length is the distance where the string meets at the bridge all the way to the nut. So if you grab the tape measure and measured from here all the way to the nut, most of the time it's going to be 25 and a half inches. That's on any standard Fender scale guitar. Um, a lot of Ibanez's are 25 and a half inches as well. Gibson's are typically 24.75, PRS's are 25 inches. Um, and then when you get into seven strings and stuff like that, they can range anywhere from 26.5 all the way up to 28 and sometimes even 30 inches. So basically, the longer that your scale length is, it's more likely that your neck is gonna be a little bit longer. So this is pretty standard, 25 and a half. If it was something crazy like 28, it would be a little bit more down here and all the frets would be a little bit more wider apart. So what do strings and scale length have to do with each other and why is it so important when determining a string gauge? Before we get into it, we should kind of decide what the perfect string gauge is and what determines a perfect string gauge. In my case, because I'm a metal player and I do a lot of chugging and stuff like that, the idea of a perfect string gauge for me is something that I can play just as hard as I like to without the string bowing out of tune. With that in mind, I'd also like the flexibility to bend super easy on the three lower strings so soloing is much easier. But the main one for me is that I don't want my guitar to flex in and out of tune when I play super hard. And I feel like that's a great starting point for people if they're looking for the perfect string gauge, especially if they're playing seven strings and eight strings and looking to tune low. So going back to the idea of what the perfect string gauge is, for me, the perfect string gauge is something that I can pick on the top three strings and not go out of tune, and still something that's relatively easy to solo on on the bottom strings. There's two rules about strings that you need to know before you even start looking at string gauges. The first one is that a thicker string gauge has more tension, and the second one is that the longer your scale length is, the more tension there will be. If you think about it logically, if you get a piece of string and stretch it over a longer distance, that string is gonna be more tight and there's gonna be more tension. If you get that same length of string and hold it out with a shorter distance, it's gonna have a little bit more slack and probably be a little bit more floppy. Let's visualize this and put it into a visual context so it's a little bit easier to explain. Let's say we have two packs of strings. Both of those packs of strings have the exact same gauges in them, except one of them we're gonna put on a Gibson, which has a 24.75 inch scale 
And the other one we're going to put on a Fender or an Ibanez or something like that, that has a 25 and a half inch scale. So something that's a little bit longer. And we're both going to put those guitars in the exact same tuning. Because the weight and mass of each of those strings are the exact same across the both of those guitars, the Gibson one is going to feel a little bit more slinky to play. The reason being is because that Gibson scale length is a little bit shorter than that Fender style one. So again, the Gibson is 24.75 and the Fender is 25 and a half. Because there's less distance on the Gibson for the string to be stretched over, there is less tension and the string is more wobbly. Similarly, if you were to get that exact same gauge of string again and put it on a third guitar that had a 27 inch scale length, so something that's a whole inch and a half longer than the Fender scale, even though it's in the same tuning, that guitar is gonna be much tighter to play than the Fender one and it's probably gonna be a little bit harder to bend notes and you're probably gonna have an easier time keeping in tune. And again, it's because those strings are now being stretched over an even longer scale, so there's more tension. There's gonna be less flex in the strings when you pick them, and you're gonna have a little bit of a harder time bending notes because there is more tension on each of those strings. So now we get into the question of, well, what if I want my Gibson style guitar to play like my Fender? What if I don't want the strings to have that little bit of slack? What if I wanna have the shorter scale length of a Gibson, but still have the same tightness and feel as if I was to put those same strings on a Fender style guitar? Well, to compensate for having the extra tension on that Fender style guitar with the Gibson, what you would need to do typically is up your string gauge. For example, if both guitars were strung up with a pack of nines, for the Gibson, if you wanted it to feel like the Fender, you might go up to a pack of tens. It's not gonna be exactly the same 100% if you look at it scientifically, but the feel should be relatively close. And similarly, if you were playing a Fender style guitar and you said, I don't want my strings to be this tight, I wanna play in the same tuning, but I want it to feel like the Gibson scale, instead of going up in string gauge, you would go down. Because going down in string gauge means all the strings are a little bit thinner, there's less mass and less weight in each of those strings, which means there's less tension, which means it's gonna be easier to bend notes and stuff like that. So to recap that whole thing one more time, thicker string gauges have more tension and having a longer scale length will give you more tension, having a shorter one will give you less tension. So now let's get onto the good stuff. What if we wanna tune really, really low. There is definitely a limit of how low you can tune on a certain guitar. Understanding that when we detune a guitar, you're lowering the tension of the string because you're tuning lower and lower and lower. The strings start to get a little bit more floppy. The note goes a little bit lower. So you're losing tension. So based on what we just learned, that means that we need to bump up our string gauge so that we can have a thicker string to kind of compensate for the tension that we would usually be used to feeling in a more standard tuning. So I was editing the video and I realized that I forgot to talk about intonation. So I'm just cutting in quickly from my phone. So basically with a longer scale length, you're gonna have a much easier time intonating on lower tunings. For example, if you had a 25.5 inch scale length guitar and you wanted to tune all the way down to drop G, you're probably gonna have a hard time because the thicker string that you're gonna be using is gonna make it harder to intonate, especially around that 12th fret and the 24th fret. There's probably gonna be not enough room on your bridge to move the saddle to intonate. Thicker strings and lower tunings make it really hard to intonate, which is why you see bands like Meshuggah using nearly 30 inch guitars to go down to F because they're gonna have a much easier time intonating. You could technically play F on a 25.5 inch guitar um, with a really, really, really thick gauge of string, but chances are you're not gonna intonate properly and you're gonna run into tuning issues against the upper frets of the guitar. It's also worth mentioning that yes, while you can play in drop E and drop F and double drop D or whatever on a 25.5 inch guitar technically, the tone suffers at a certain point. When you use a super thick string, say for example, you used an 80 string on a 25.5 inch guitar, it's probably gonna sound a little bit dull. That's why these longer scales even exist in the first place, not only because of intonation, but because people have figured out that longer scales and thinner strings actually sound better, more clear, more defined. Really, really thick strings in super low tunings on super short scale guitars tend to sound dull because you're using that really thick string which already dulls out the tone as it is. Um, intonation issues, it's just not a good time. So yeah, that's my quick interjection. Longer scale lengths make intonation a little bit easier and they definitely sound a whole lot better for lower tune stuff. If you play standard E and have a 48 gauge string on your low E and you wanna tune down to drop C, that string is gonna get super, super, super floppy real quickly. That's because you're tuning that note a whole four semitones lower than what it usually sits at. So to compensate for that, you wanna get a thicker gauge string so it maintains the same tension as it would feel when you're playing standard E on a 48 gauge. 
So a common scenario is someone saying, well, I have a guitar and let's say I usually play in drop D and I run these strings. What if now I wanna tune lower and play in something like drop C or drop B? The scale length of the guitar stays the same because we're using the same guitar. So how do I get it to feel the same as if I was playing in drop D? What string gauges would I need? There's a great website, I'll leave it in the description. It's called the String Joy Tension Calculator. Basically, once you enter this site, you can pick if you want a six, seven or eight string guitar, you can pick the exact tunings of each string and you can pick the exact gauge and it will tell you the tension that it gives you. So a great point of reference would be to figure out, well, I play in this tuning with these strings usually, let's put it into the tension calculator and see what comes up. So say that you do all of that and then on the low string, it pops up with a tension of around 18 pounds. And that's what you always play, you like the way that that feels. So when you wanna tune lower and get that same feeling around that 18 tension mark, what you wanna do is you wanna pick the note that you plan to tune in and then pick a gauge that's a little bit higher until the tension starts to show around the same value as it did before. And that's where the string source comes in and that's the reason why I use them because they take all of the guesswork out of it. Every single one of the packets of strings that they offer at the string source, whether it's the emerald set or the amber set, or the Topaz set are perfectly designed to give you just a little bit of slack on the bottom strings and enough tension on the top string so that when you pick hard, it doesn't flow out of tune. That's such a big issue for a lot of guitar players that are playing modern metal music where they're tuning low and picking super hard is that those low notes are always going up in pitch when you pick them and then settling back down. So to combat that, you get a thicker string so it doesn't get affected as much when you pick through it which is why every single set from the string source has a drop set and a normal set. So the drop set gives you a thicker gauge string just for the lower string and the standard one gives you a normal standard string. By the way, this isn't an ad for the string source. Um, I know I'm endorsed by them, but they didn't ask me to do this video. I'm just showing these off because it's literally the perfect example and it's the exact reason why I use them. So now that we understand why the tuning and scale length are really important factors into determining what kind of strings you need, let's get into that third point that we kind of touched on before your playing style. This point is what I think is a differentiation between this video and other string gauge videos that I've seen and I'm sure that you've seen um, because it's something that not a lot of them talk about but it definitely does play a part in terms of what string gauge you should be picking. Playing style encompasses so many different things but all of them no matter how minute they are definitely determine the overall stability and the tuning of your guitar. So going through these points and touching on them quickly, they don't need their own massive explanation. They're just little things that might determine if you need a thicker string or a lower string. The thickness of your pick is definitely going to determine the string gauge that you need for your guitar. The reason being is that if you have a super thick pick, there is more mass in the pick. And when you pick a string, there's gonna be more follow through. You're putting more weight through that string and that string is gonna flex a little bit more. If you were using a really thin pick, something that has a lot of flex in it, um, when you pick super hard, you're kind of flowing through the strings. You're not picking them and moving them and making them bounce. So you're probably gonna get less flex when you're playing, which means that your notes are probably gonna stay just a little bit more in tune. This is why a lot of guitar players use different picks in the studio as opposed to live. So when you think about it, when you're in the studio, you wanna be super precise, you're recording things, you want everything to be super tight, and you're probably playing a little bit more careful when you're not picking as hard. This is why some guitar players in a studio situation go for a little bit of a thicker pick because they know they're gonna be a little bit more careful when they play and they're probably not gonna push notes out of tune. However, in a live situation where you're in front of a crowd, the adrenaline is pumping, you're probably gonna be playing your guitar a little bit harder than you would sitting in a chair in a studio. So if you use the same gauge of pick, you're probably gonna be pushing notes a little bit out of tune. So to combat that adrenaline and being super, super psyched to be on stage and playing super hard, they use a little bit of a thinner pick on stage so that you don't push the notes out of tune so much and there's less mass in the pick. So when you follow through, it's not bowing notes out of tune. Monster guitar players like John Brown from Monuments and John Dealey from North Lane, I just realized both of their names are John, have absolutely monster picking hands and pick each of those strings like it owes them money every single time. Bashing low notes like this, as opposed to something like this. You can probably hear it that when I was playing super, super hard, it sounded a little bit higher in pitch and when I played a little bit softer, it was a little bit more settled. If you're a super hard picker like me, you probably wanna go for a thicker gauge of string so it combats that kind of flex in pitch that you get when you pick a note. If you're a light picker, this won't be much of an issue for you because you can probably get away with using a thinner gauge of string because you're not putting the string through absolute torment. 
Another thing about playing style that would affect your string gauge is your guitar setup and picking style. Next time that you have a moment, take a video of yourself with your picking hand on your guitar. If you watch yourself back and your picking style is kind of down like this on the string, so you're kind of following through, that's how I play. If your picking style is perpendicular to the string, so it's kind of like a flat follow through, um, you're probably gonna get less kind of movement in the strings when you pick and everything's gonna be a little bit tighter. If you're attacking the strings like at an angle, which I know a lot of players do, for example, Ola England, another guitar YouTuber, he does that, I know he does that. Um, it really depends on, you know, how you kind of grew up playing guitar, what was taught to you and stuff. If you pick on an angle, chances are that that string is kind of wobbling all over the place and you're probably gonna get more notes bending out of tune when you pick. So again, that's another factor that determines if you might need a little bit of a thicker string. If you use a super thick pick and you play super hard and you're picking at an angle, you're probably going to find yourself getting notes out of tune a lot when you're picking super hard. So you want to go for a thicker gauge of string. However, if you're more of a reserved guitar player that kind of has a little bit more of a traditional picking style, you could probably get away with a normal set of strings or maybe something a little bit lighter. So I know that was a lot of information to take in. So to recap everything quickly that we've learned in this video, very, very briefly, a longer scale length means more tension, a shorter scale length means less tension. The thicker your strings are, the more tension that you're gonna have and the tighter it's gonna be. The thinner your strings are, the less tension there's gonna be. And then on top of all that, it's a good idea to kind of take into consideration things about your playing style, your picking style, how hard you're picking, stuff like that. So after all of that, I guess I haven't really answered what is the perfect string gauge for this guitar in this tuning. And the reason why I've tried my best to not say as many gauges specifically up until this point it's because I want you guys to understand why you pick certain string gauges. I don't just want to give you a string gauge and then you try it and then you tell me it's rubbish. I'd much rather you guys watch this video and share it around to your friends who might be looking for new string gauges or might want to know what string gauge they need for their guitar so they can look at those points, get a general understanding of you know how it works, the science behind tension and stuff like that and why you need thicker gauges for lower tunings, etc., etc. So you can make your own informed decisions about what string gauge you need. So yeah, that basically does it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video informative, please consider leaving a like and a comment. And if you think this video would help a friend out, definitely refer it to them as well. If you guys wanna support me directly, you can check out my Patreon and my affiliate links. All that stuff will be down in the description below. And I'll also be leaving a link to thestringsource.com where you guys can get 10% off any string purchases by using the code KIAN at checkout. Thank you to all my Patreons. Again, this video would not be possible without you guys. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.